I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering. In this episode, we're going to talk uh, about ggplot in returning to our Python playlist, and we're going to use this popular plotting uh, technology in order to create some plots uh, in Python. Now, ggplot is, is very uh, popular uh, among the R crowd, the programmers in R, and, and for good reason, because ggplot supports uh, the grammar of graphics, which is uh, sort of a, a way of describing um, plots in a very standardized way. And so with the ggplot and plot9 libraries in Python, we're able to extend that and use that in Python uh, in a way that uh, we can create plots, all kinds of different plots, from scatter charts to bar charts. Uh, you name it, there's all kinds of different uh, charts in there. So without further ado, let's get to our scatter plot in ggplot and plot9. Okay, so to get started, this is a file I used before called Access Data. And I have some data called Climate Change Data from the World Bank uh, that I've used in several other uh, of my examples. And this has uh, uh, some calculations in it for meters, irrigation, and energy. And uh, before we get started, uh, I would suggest you install, I uh, use pip to install plot9. So we're going to use our pip install plot9 uh, from command, and that's going to give us uh, um, some of the packages which will get installed and allow us to use that ggplot. Um, style of wording for our describing our graphs and I had some of that cached already because I tried to install it unsuccessfully the first time uh, so that went pretty quickly and uh, we can go ahead and get started so what I'm going to do is uh, I'll start my idle shell and I'm just going to start a new file and uh, and I save that as uh, python underscore ggplot and then I can just go ahead and um, I can uh, import uh, PyODBC because we're going to use uh, PyODBC to look at our access database and uh, I'm going to use pandas because uh, we're going to use a pandas data frame for our data and then uh, I'll use from plot9 import star um, that's going to uh, to give us everything that we need for today's uh, for t today's demonstration of how to do a scatter scatter chart using uh, ggplot. And what I'll do is I'll give a little bit of feedback in our idle shell as our script runs just so that we know the database is opening and closing. It's always good to open your data source, uh, extract your data, and then close the data source before you do anything else with it um, so that if you do get any um, if you do get any errors then you'll you can uh, uh, you'll know that your data connection has been closed. Uh, so what I did there is I'm just gonna I pasted in a connection string uh, from another file that I was using um, that has my access database connection string in it. If you have any questions about that, just let me know. Uh, in an earlier video, I did uh, describe how we uh, can use our, our ODBC to to connect to Microsoft Access, and we'll use some of those uh, techniques here. So, uh, so I used uh, cnn equals uh, pio.connect and then we'll put our connection string in and we'll print selecting and then our SQL string we're going to say select uh, country and um, meters and energy uh, from uh, a land area table that I created from the, uh, the World Bank data um, where I changed, um, I did some work ahead of time to change uh, the text fields that had numbers in them into actual numeric fields, uh, which makes it a bit nicer for us to select from and use in our in our uh, scatter chart. So from there, I can ask for a data frame uh, using uh, pd dot read uh, underscore sql, and I'll I'll put my sql string in there and my connection in order to get uh, the data. Uh, from the access database and then once uh, that's done I'll say uh, closing because uh, we're going to go ahead and close our database connection uh, once we have a data frame out and uh, we can close it by simply using the uh, close command. 
And just so that we know we got a little bit of data in there, I'll go ahead and I'll print the uh, data.head and we'll take the first uh, 10 rows from that data frame. And that'll give a little feedback in the idle shell, which is kind of what we want to see. And once we have data in our data frame, then we can go ahead and we can create a graph object. It'll be, it'll, it will be a ggplot object that'll be returned. And uh, so we're going to uh, put this in brackets. We'll say ggplot, and then we're going to use our data frame, uh, data, data frame. And, uh, and then in order to put the aesthetics on, we'll use uh, x equals energy and uh, y is equal to uh, meters. <clears throat> so that'll give us a nice scatter plot that'll show energy versus uh, the percent of uh, uh, land under five meters for each country. And, uh, and that is gonna give us a nice uh, sort of measure. So we'll, we'll color it using the amount of energy uh, so that it'll change color as more and more energy is being used and uh, I'm going to paste in here under the labels the actual title uh, that I that I got um, and that's going to be uh, it it's, gives a conversion into oil um, so I'm just going to copy that from another file that I have and I'll paste that in uh, for our title and it looks like I missed a, missed a quote there so I'll put that in and uh, see the slash n in there that's going to um, allow you to go to a new line uh, because it is quite a long title and uh, that's going to give us our uh, our title and then in order to see our graph we'll say print uh, our graph uh, variable and that's going to pop that into uh, a plot uh, which will uh, which will display in another window now as it uh, executes, uh, we can see that the idle shell starts and then it opens the, uh, the database as we put in our uh, commands there. It selects uh, the data and it closes it. It spits out the top 10 rows uh, in, in that uh, data frame so that we can see what's going on and then it draws a plot in a small window uh, which you can see has our energy and our meters in there. And if we expand that into a full screen, then uh, the, the plot looks much nicer and you can sort of get a sense for the scale. Now that has quite a few outliers in it, so um, we could <clears throat> sort of uh, just capture um, the, the bulk of the, uh, the dots or countries that are uh, within a certain range. So we could do that by either uh, filtering in our data frame or we could change it at the source just by changing our SQL string when we select from the Microsoft Access table. And that's going to give us uh, uh, a bit of a different read on the data. So you can see I changed the, uh, the selection criteria there and I'll save that and then when I hit run or I hit F5 again then that's going to pop out and I've, I've just taken the, the uh, plot which shows um, the land area below five meters uh, versus energy. Now I could refine that a little bit further uh, since uh, most people do need to consume some energy. So we could show that between 50 and, and 400 just for an example and, uh, and uh, keep the meters uh, uh, less than 40 percent of the land under five meters in elevation and that'll, that'll change our graph to, to look a little bit more uh, like we can see what's going on there and we can definitely see that there's a negative relationship between those two and we could do some further examination. And that's how you do a simple scatter chart in ggplot in Python. Make sure you check out the other types such as uh, geombar and geomtile and others as you can really use uh, ggplot for so many different things and uh, and the nice thing is, is that you can use the same kind of notation and syntax uh, in R and in Python, which is really helpful. I hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use uh, ggplot to do a scatter, scatter plot uh, or other kinds of plots, as you can do many different kinds. You can do bar charts and, and uh, uh, heat maps and all kinds of things uh, using ggplot. Uh, if you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up 
And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, make sure to click the bell when you see the bell if you when you subscribe so that you'll be notified of any new content that I put up on the channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, uh, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And uh, I'll, be, I'll do my best to answer everybody's questions uh, to the best of my ability. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.